Greetings again from uh, Brian Fields, uh, Amateur Ready Call Sign, W9CR. And um, I'm showing you today how to align the squelch settings uh, in a CDM1550 uh, 200 megahertz radio uh, for amateur use on the 220 band. And uh, this is after we have changed out the filters to the wideband FM filters. And what Motorola has is a set of uh, potentiometers, uh, digital potentiometers, that align the radio over the entire frequency range. And this is true of all Wearis series radios, all professional series radios. So uh, in the, the CDM 200 megahertz version, there's uh, seven frequency peers uh, that you set up the squelch on for 12, 20, and 25 kilohertz. Now, these radios were born to only do 20 kilohertz, or excuse me, 12.5 kilohertz. So, consequently, they weren't aligned properly from the factory uh, for 25 kilohertz, which takes into account the uh, wideband noise uh, on, a, uh, on a signal uh, that passes through the IF stages. And so when you change out those IF uh, uh, crystal filters, uh, you need to or ceramic filters, you need to redo the squelch settings. Um, I've already done the 20 kilohertz setting, but I'll show you how to do it in tuner here for the uh, 25 kilohertz setting, which most people will use on the hand band. So, first of all, if you try to go there, you'll see that the squelch attenuation isn't even there. You, you know, you can't select it. It won't work. So, use a little software shim here. I mean, I could hack the program, but this works, so why exert the effort? Because uh, this is a means to an end. So. I select Tuner for Professional uh, Series Radios, and um, I do Capture Menu. Now you'll see the menu here has captured what the menu is on the Tuner for Professional and Entry Series Radios. Um, so I click RX Align, Squelch, Squelch Attenuation 25 kilohertz, and there you go. You're going to see they're all set to the maximum, which is the tightest possible setting you can get from the factory. So I have my uh, service monitor, uh, which is uh, of course out of camera view right now, set up with the various frequencies in it. And I'm going to start with frequency one, uh, or two, in my memory here, which is uh, our first frequency here, uh, 216025. And these are default from the factory. Uh, you can, of, call, or of course, change these if you so want uh, in the, the tuning area of the code plug. Um, but uh, I'm going to leave them alone because there's no reason to mess with it for me. So I normally find that uh, negative 127.5 dBm or a 0 0.095 microvolt signal is great to align to. It's about 6 dB signal noise ratio, um, which is uh, quite a noisy squelch for commercial operation. But for handband operation, it, uh, it works very well. If you have any issues, you can also align this differently, uh, or you can align it by ear as well. There's a procedure for that, but what we're going to use is something called auto-tune. So I inject that signal with no modulation on it, and I simply click auto-tune, and you're going to see, hey, wait, I'm auto-tuning. And you should hear some uh, squelch coming through there. And if I kick it on and off, you'll hear that it does break the squelch just barely at that uh, signal level. So we know we're aligned properly. And let me turn my volume down there. I'm going to go through the next frequencies and do that. So two, let's see, three, auto-tune. And more than likely, it's going to come up with the same values here. Um, 43. I always test it at each frequency. Sometimes auto-tune will be one or two off. Um, and it may actually be off in that case. So let me go to the next pier. Four, auto tune. Yeah, it's it's one off in that case. It should probably be 43. Uh, on the near wider bandwidth radios, like the UHF ones, um, this is very important because the, the linearity of the circuit is not perfect over the entire range. But keep in mind, we're only dealing with a, a 217 to 225 radio here, so that's not that large of a range, or really 216 to 224. Which is neat is that Motorola, if you notice, they only needed to cover 217 to 222, but they put in tuning frequencies all the way from 216 to basically 225, um, which is, is great, meaning that 
it's very easy to extend these radios to cover the ham band because you don't have to edit any of these tuning points. So I'm, I'm certain there were some hams involved there, probably some 220 people as well uh, that designed this. And that, that's a, uh, if they didn't do it on purpose, it's still very nice that they did it because uh, it, it makes our job much easier. We go to the next pier. Auto tune. Forty-three, six, auto tune. That one just closed a bit. I think forty-three is going to be optimal here. Normally, these all come out about the same. Yeah, that's good. I think 43 is going to be where we need to be. And let's do the ultimate one here. Auto tune. And occasionally you'll get this radio communications error. Ignore it. Sometimes it'll happen two or three times, sometimes it won't. It's just strange. And um, yeah, 43 is really where it needs to be. There we go. And uh, you see everything here kind of went down a little bit. I'm even going to knock this one down to 43 as well. Double check that. You want it to be noisy, you know, as you can hear. And that's all there is to it. So, very important, click Program. And it's going to ask you, do you want to commit these new soft pot values? You click Yes. And uh, there we go. We should be good. The radio will reboot. And there we are. That's how you do it. And uh, you know you can pretty much hit anything in here. Um, there is some stuff that gets grayed out here. Um, and you, you do have to do the alignment. I've already done all the TX alignment and everything. Uh, what I have found is that these radios typically are aligned lower uh, in power. I, I don't know if that's like that from the factory or whatever, but they fully are capable of doing 30 watts out. Um, and they're very efficient, too. They draw about 5 amps, so it works out very well. Anyways, I appreciate you watching.